Chapter 32 I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. Alif Lam Mim Letters of the Arabic language of which God alone knows what they refer to and mean, but Ibn Abbas explained it could be that these letters are an oath sworn by God, the Almighty. This scripture is free from doubt and from the Lord of the worlds. It has been sent down to you, yet the disbelievers say Muhammad made it up. No, indeed, this is the Lord's truth. Given to Muhammad, so he can warn his people, as no warner had previously come to them from God, who in six days created everything in the earth and in the heaven. Each of those days is a thousand years by man's reckoning, after which God established himself on the throne, and disbelievers will have no one to intercede for them to avoid the fire from becoming their home. So why do you not heed this Qur'an and accept the call to this faith? He runs everything from heaven to earth, and all things will ascend to him from their final resting place. That will happen on the day, a day lasting a thousand years in human estimation, God knows the seen and the unseen. He is mighty and merciful. He perfectly formed creation. First he created Adam from clay and then made his descendants from semen. He moulded Adam, breathed his spirit into him and gave them abilities of hearing, sight and thinking. How seldom man is grateful for all he has, what little thanks he gives. As the disbelievers mock the resurrection, they are being utterly dismissive. They mock really, when we've died and disappeared into the earth, will we be brought back to life? They deny that they will meet their Lord, but on the day that the angels descend, you'll see the terror in their eyes. Tell them the angel of death who is put in charge of you will take your souls at death, and then you'll be brought back to your Lord and suffer eternal regret. Prophet, if you could see the transgressors hang their heads in shame before the Almighty, saying, Our Lord, now we have seen the resurrection, send us back and we'll act rightly. Now we are convinced by what we heard of you, confirming what the messengers brought to us, but it will be of no use to them then. It will be too late for them to change their ways or adjust. If it had been our will, we could have given each soul guidance, but my words have come true. I said I shall be sure to fill hell with both jinn and men. Each soul will be rewarded what it is due. So since you ignored the meeting on this day, you are ignored and condemned to eternal suffering. The only ones who truly believe in our messages are those who, when they hear them, bow down and start worshipping. They exclaim the praises of their Lord and do not think themselves above doing so. They give to others from what we have given and shun their beds to pray to God in fear and hope. No soul knows what joyous sights are kept in reward for the good that they have done. The one who truly believes in God is far above any and every defiant one. Those who believe and do good deeds will have the garden, a great gift from their Lord, a fitting home and recompense for all the good they have stored. And as for those who defy God, their home will be in the fire. When they try to escape, they are dragged back and told taste the punishment of being a denier. We shall certainly make them taste the torment in this life before the torment of the life to come so that they may heed and thus obey and follow God along with the righteous ones. Who does more wrong than one who turns from the Qur'an when it is recited to him? Such people are surely the guilty ones, and they will suffer a mighty retribution. We gave Moses the scripture, so Muhammad be assured it was Moses that you did meet. Do not doubt the encounter when we sent you on the night journey. The scripture we gave him was a guide for the children of Israel, from which they should take heed. We raised leaders amongst them when they became steadfast and in our messages they believed. God will judge between people on where they differed in their religion. He will make a distinction between those who believe and those who didn't on the day of decision. Are there not enough lessons for disbelievers in the previous generations who were destroyed? Indeed, they travel to those places. Why don't they heed the Quran and learn from it? and ensure their destruction is something they avoid. Do they not consider how we drive the rain to barren land, raising vegetation for creatures to eat? Do they not see? And yet they say, if you are indeed telling the truth, tell us when this day of decision will be. They await your death. So say to them, on the day of decision, it will be of no use then for the disbelievers to then believe. 
So turn from them and await their punishment on the day they will have no respite or relief. <laughs>